Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Fit Bucks podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome there as well. Uh, we've got an exciting episode today. It's something that I get from students all the time about, um, you know, what can I really do as a student? Because um, I can't make payments and stuff on my student loans because I don't have a job and all that stuff. So what, what really do I need to know about student loans right now? And oftentimes I use that as, as an excuse not to start doing anything. This episode, we're going to be talking about what you can do as a student. Now, most of it, you're right. It's not about the student loans, but it's about the bigger picture. What can you be doing to put yourself on a really, really good financial path going forward post-graduation and really set yourself up? Uh, so that we don't really have to think about money in the long run. You can really think about what your job is, your family, and all that type of stuff because you know that your, uh, your, your finances are taken care of. So that's what we're going to talk about today is what are things you can be doing as a student to really set yourself up on a good path. Now, first and foremost, uh, everything that we're going to talk about today is going to be – anybody can apply this. Uh, there's going to be one or two things here and there that are specific situations. Like the first thing that we're going to go through right now um, is a 401k rollover. Some of you didn't work before school, so this doesn't apply to you. But for those of you that did work before school, um, or maybe you went to your undergrad, you had some time off, you worked, and then went back to grad school, you may have a 401k. Here's a little trick for you, okay? A 401k is made with pre-tax contributions. So one of the big benefits is that you get to, get to reduce how much you pay in taxes for that year. And then it grows tax-deferred. And then when you take it out in retirement, you have to pay taxes on it, okay? Well, you could potentially do what's called an IRA conversion, okay, or an IRA rollover. And what you do is you actually do it into a Roth conversion, okay? So again, you roll over the 401k and you do a Roth conversion. Now, first and foremost, before I go further, definitely talk to your accountant about doing this because they'll make sure you do everything right with the taxes. But what you do is you say, okay, we'll have this 401k. Well, you don't have any income while you're a student, right? Because you might not be working. And if you are, you probably have, have low amount of income. So if you roll over all or some of your 401k, you can move it to a Roth, okay? Most of the time, people don't do this. The reason being is because when you take it out of your 401k and move it to your Roth, that looks like taxable income. Well, you're, don't, you're not really working, so you don't have that much taxable income. So you're in a basically a 0% tax bracket. So you might as well roll it out of the 401k, move it into the Roth IRA. What's the benefit of doing that? It grows tax deferred, and then when you take it out, it's tax free. So you can get a lot of growth. So if you're a student with a 401k, definitely recommend rolling over into what's called a Roth conversion. Again, if you guys want to go deeper dive into that, doesn't apply to everybody that's listening to this podcast. So if you want to deeper dive into what that is, you know, just reach out to us, let us know, and I can definitely, you know, dive deeper into how you can do that and all that type of stuff, okay? The next one is budgeting as a student, okay? Now, this one applies to everybody, and this is something major that we see. And you're like, well, how can I budget as a student? I don't have any income. You're right, okay? But the problem that we see oftentimes is that people take out money in loans with their student loans, and they get it at the beginning of the semester or the beginning of the quarter, okay? That's when it's dispersed. So then you get to the end of the semester and you don't have any more money because you didn't budget correctly. So on this, when you're budgeting as a student, it's not, well, how much of my percentage of my income is going to all these different things and all that type of stuff. It's I'm getting this amount of money. What do I need to do to budget not to run out of money until my next disbursement date? Okay. Now, if you do run out of money, that's where we see a lot of people getting a credit card debt is because how, how else are you going to fund it? If you're not working, you can't take out another student loan until the next semester or next quarter, credit cards, right? So that's why we've seen like $9 million of credit card debt on our Fitbox profile. That's one of the main reasons. Okay, the second reason I'm going to touch on it a little bit down the road. So as a student, you want to start budgeting. Now, I get when I bring that up all the time with our student loan workshops that we do at schools and stuff, I get asked all the time, well, what app is out there that I can use to budget? Right now, there is none. Not for students. All of them out there are like your traditional type of budgeting stuff. Um, there is a company that actually reached out to me yesterday. Um, I'm really hoping that they do really good. It's five, a group of five uh, students who are under uh, undergrads that saw this problem, and they're in the process of creating an app for it. It's not out yet, so I don't want to say the name of it because like if you guys bombard their website, you're probably going to crash it because it's not ready to, to download and stuff. 
Uh, but stay tuned. I mean, if they reach back out to me and they finish the app, then, you know, we'll let everybody know uh, because I think it's going to be great um, just because it's a huge need. Um, disclosure, no, I have no investment in that company. We have no agreement with that company, nothing. Um, but we'll let you know what it is when when it comes out, okay? Because, again, for students, it's huge. So that's the second thing is budgeting as a student. Again, it's not as a percentage of your income. It's more, hey, I'm getting this disbursement today. It's got to last me X amount of time. What can I do to budget that out? How much can I spend on food every day? How much can I spend on, you know, clothes? How much can I spend on travel and gas, so on and so forth, so that way you don't run out of money, okay? I did bring up credit cards, okay? So I will touch on that one right now. Some of you already have credit card debt, okay? If that's the case, then you may actually want to borrow more in student loans than what you think you need. People are like, wait, 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 what? Did you just tell us to borrow more in student loans? Yes. And the reason being is because you don't want to graduate with that credit card debt. Not only that, it's, it's killing your credit score first and foremost. So that can lead to more expensive debt down the road. You don't want that. But it's also being charged a lot more interest. Most, most credit cards are at like 20%. So if you already have credit cards, borrow a little bit more on student loans and then use the extra money to pay off the credit card. Because I'd rather have you have student loan debt that's at 6 or 7% or even 4 or 5% versus credit cards that are like 20% and destroying your credit. Okay. So that's the next thing. That's, that's the, the third item that you can do as a student. The fourth one is like internships or for some of you like uh, I know a lot of you are PTs or OTs or whatnot that are watching this, PAs, whatever it is, like let's just say you have to do clinicals or something like that, okay? So internships or clinicals, whatever it is, be strategic about it, okay? You know, if you live on the East Coast, don't go to California unless you know someone, you know, that you can bunk up with or live with so that way it's not very expensive or a family member. Um, too often times I see people like taking these like really expensive trips across the country they're paying all this rent, you know, in California and also in, in the East Coast at the same time. It's like, no, 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 okay? Be strategic about it. So keep those expenses down during the internships and clinicals. But not only that, make sure you're using them to network for jobs. I can't tell you how many new grads that we speak to, <laughs> and this is what I hear all the time. I just be like, yeah, did you, did you like your clinicals and your internships? And they'd be like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, so what, what's going on with your job? And they're like, well, I'm still looking. And I had to turn around. I'm like, did you, did you ask your clinical or your internship? Like, hey, do you guys have any openings? And they're like, no, I didn't ask. It's like, you, you just told me that you, you liked it. Why didn't you ask for a job? Right? And even if they said no, if they like you, they're probably going to introduce you to other people that are like them. They know other people that are like them and other positions that you could potentially do. So don't be afraid to ask for the job, but make sure you're strategic with the internships, okay? So that's the fourth item you can do. The fifth item, this really revolves around what we call our, our two formulas that make financial planning easy. It revolves around the first formula, and that is income minus expenses equals remaining cash. Basically, it, it's a budget, okay? But to simplify it, we just go into that simple formula, income minus expenses, remaining cash, okay? Think about your job. Okay, this is extremely important. Why? Because it influences that income line item. Okay, so think about like where you're going to be working, like the physical location, because I can give you an example, of like a physical therapy in a uh, physical therapist, I'm sorry, in Las Vegas is going to actually get paid more than like a physical therapist in New York City. doesn't make sense, but it happens that way. California is going to pay the highest for that profession. You know, PAs, for example, you know, you might say, hey, look, the average in, in XYZ city is really good for new grads or for those that are out for, you know, one to five years, but it's really hard to find a job as a new grad. So it's like, well, it doesn't matter if you're there or not because you're not going to be able to find a job. So you want to start thinking about what that job is. Not only that, but what setting are you in? Okay. Different things from outpatient, inpatient, whatever it may be. If you're an undergrad watching this, where are you at? What does your career projection look like? If it's a beginner job, what does that potentially look like, that ramp up? That's extremely important because it influences income. The first thing in that formula, income minus expenses equals remaining cash. So it's going to start dictating everything you do with your money. 
start thinking about that as a student and start thinking about ways of potentially figuring out how you can increase that income as a student. Now, the other thing about thinking about your job, what that does is because you can also start thinking about, again, like I said earlier, where is that job? Where is the physical location? Because that's the second part of that formula. What does the expenses look like? I brought up Las Vegas and, and New York earlier. That's the crazy part, especially for PTs. And I go back to that example because we have so much data on them. Income is one of the highest for new grads, and the cost of living is one of the lowest in Vegas. And New York is the complete opposite. Cost of living is high, pays like one of the lowest. And it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Now, that doesn't say don't live in New York. It just means you got to know that. And that expense is extremely important because you got to start figuring out saying, what are the number one expenses like rent? And is there a way I can actually reduce that? But it also leads to something that's even more important. Okay, and that's the last thing I'm going to talk about. Planning for your grace period. So your grace period is the first six months post-graduation where you don't have to make a payment, okay, on your loans, okay? Now, if you're a grad student and you already use your grace period on your undergrad loans, you don't get another one. But if you can't make payments, then you can actually call and ask for forbearance. I'm not going to dive deep into that on this podcast because that's on other blogs that we've done and everything, and that's not what we're, we're really talking about today. But what you need to know about your grace period is those six months have a game plan. Have a game plan. Okay. First thing is about those expenses I told you about. Why are they so important? You need to look at what your rent might be, your utilities might be, and what your food's going to be post graduation. You want to multiply that by a certain number. Most advisors are going to tell you multiply that by six. That's how much money you should have in a bank account. Okay. The reason why most advisors tell you six months in emergency fund is because that's on average how long it takes somebody to find a new job if they get laid off. Therefore, that's why they give you that information. So you have to look at it and say, what are my job prospects coming out of school? Is it going to take me six months? If I get laid off, am I going to be able to find a job? Because that might actually say, well, I'm I'm better than the average. My profession is is in demand or something like that, right? So there's a really low unemployment rate. So maybe your emergency fund is three months. Maybe you want to start your own business. So maybe your emergency fund is nine or 12 months. Maybe you want to be a traveler. So you might do four or five or six months, but you need to start thinking about what those expenses are. So that way you can start planning to have your emergency fund. So that's the very first goal you have in your grace period, those first six months post-graduation. Okay. The second one would be if you have credit cards still. Pay them off as soon as you can after you get that emergency fund set up. And then you go into your student loan plan and your retirement plan and everything else. But those first two things are key. Getting your emergency fund. And if you have credit cards, pay them off as soon as possible. So I know this was a quick podcast because I get this question all the time about what should I do as a student to prepare for student loans. And like I said in the beginning, it's not just student loans to prepare for. It's planning to put yourself on a good financial footing when you graduate. So I'm just gonna summarize these one more time, go through them all. 401k rollover, that's for people that had work before they started school and they have a 401k and they're a student and they have low income. Do a Roth conversion, uh, do a 401k rollover and then in, in, into a Roth conversion, okay? Again, if you have questions on that, just shoot us an email, okay? Budgeting as a student, you don't have income, so make sure that you're focusing on making sure that when you get your distribution from your student loans, you have a budget to know that that money's going to last you the entire semester. If you have credit card debt now, borrow more in student loans and use that extra money to pay off your credit cards. That's the third thing. For your internships and clinicals, be strategic. Fourth thing. Start thinking about your job is the fifth thing. Why? Because it influences your income and it influences your expenses. Uh, and that's really important for our first Fitbox formula. Income minus expenses equals remaining cash. With those expenses, you can then start planning for your first goal post-graduation. And that is your emergency fund. So making sure that you have that. And then if you still have credit cards, hit that. And then once you get those two things and you have your job, start tackling your student loans. Let it be either paying them off aggressively or saving for the tax on the student loan forgiveness plans. Either way. 
you're ready to roll, you're on a good footing going forward, you can start your retirement, you can start planning for buying houses, so on and so forth. And as always, if you guys got questions or you want us to do a special podcast or a YouTube video on a certain topic, just let us know. Talk to you soon.